Hey everybody, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a deck building game called Fantastica. Fantastica is a game for two to four players from designer Alf Siegert and publisher Eagle Griffin Games. Plays in about, what's it say, 45 to 60 minutes. It's 60 minutes if you're playing two players. It's going to go on quite a bit longer if you're playing more than that. But effectively what you're doing in this is you are a little kid and you're pretending. And what you're doing in your pretend is you have a toothbrush, you may have um, a cat. And you're pretending to those items are other things like a sword or a... A magic wand and you're traveling around this made-up land of Fantastica trying to defeat cre creatures and complete quests there's a little more to it than that but that's effectively what the game is it's a little deck building adventure game with a really adorable little theme so that's enough talking about it let's go down to the table check it out all right so here's a game of Fantastica rucksack edition which means I don't have the board but it's a, a lighter smaller box but I do have the playmat all set up for two players to set up, you're going to put the board or the playmat out or nothing. If there's no board or playmat, you're just going to set up like this. You're going to put the six location tiles on the table like this. Put one of each of the statues on them, however you want to. Then you're going to put a creature on each of the roads. So you'll start at north and you'll go around, put last one in the center. If they have a gem, you're going to put a gem on them as well. You're going to put two open quests on the open quests sections here and an additional point on each of those. And you're going to put your character on one of the, the place spaces, which I've done. Then you're going to shuffle the artifact deck, put it on the appropriate space. There's a little tile. I have some play mats, but there's a little tile. They look like It looks like this. Uh, then you're going to shuffle the Beast Bazaar, same thing. Shuffle the creatures according to the number of players. You take some out, shuffle all the quests. And I'm also using a few expansions. I'm using the rarest relics, which are going to be really nice relics. They're going to cost five gems. The normal artifacts cost two to four. And I'm also using the curious companions, which are going to be beasts that have two additional, sim two different symbols, which will make a little more sense when we start playing. Then each player is going to get a hand of 12 or 13 cards. I have an additional little mini expansion from Rival Realms in here. So you're going to get 12 or 13 cards. You're going to shuffle. Put it to the left of your player board. Oops. Let me sort that out. Left of my player board. Or right, however you want to set it up, but I like it on the left. Then um, you're going to get three flying carpet tokens, three reshuffle tokens, a starting quest, and a little quest token. You can have five quests that you're working on. And you're also going to get a turn summary and a circle of subduing guide. Now on your turn, you're going to draw five cards. So red's going to go first. They'll draw five cards. And they're going to play now in this game you're going to be a little kid who's pretending to travel around the world with little things they have trying to defeat creatures and do quests now the cards that i have i'm going to try to show them i have a cat which is a tooth i have a bat which is a club and i have a spatula with is a knife or a sword i have this artifact artifacts have that border I can exchange any two region tiles along with everything on it on the board if I want to. And I have this. Any creatures that I subdue this turn go directly into my hand to be used immediately, not into my discard pile. So let's go ahead. On your turn, you can do one of three main actions. I can go adventuring. What that means is I can move around the map and fight creatures and put them into my discard pile, or in this case, in my hand. I can visit a statue. So say I'm here. I can visit the statue. What that means is I will go to either the Beast Bazaar or the Curious Companions to draw three cards and buy as many of those as I want into my deck. Each of them costs three, so I have three gems, so I could do that if I wanted to. Third thing I can do is I can complete a quest. Quests are going to look like this. They're going to have a location that you need to be at and then different cards that you have to have to defeat that quest, and they're going to have some points and some gems. So we're trying to be the first player to get to eight points of completed quests. But any uncompleted quests that you have, deduct from that point, so you need to make sure that you know, you're getting everything done accordingly so let's go ahead and go I'm for my action I actually want to adventure because I want you to see that so I'm gonna play this into my discard area any cards that I subdue this turn go directly into my hand so what do I have here 
I don't have anything good. So let's, okay, I'm not gonna do that because I can't right now. Because I'm right here, I have none of, I don't have the, the ram, I don't have the water, I can't do any of that. And I don't wanna use a flying carpet. What the flying carpet will let you do is, I could flip one of these flying carpets and I could move across a creature, then I could start my adventure over here. But I don't wanna do that right now. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna draw use the statue. And what that means is, I'll look at either of these beast deck and I'm gonna look at this one and draw three. And then I can buy one or as many as I want for the crystals. So I'll have a magic wand and a tooth, a buck, bucket and a broom, a candle and a helmet. And let's do, what's out there on the board right now? Let's, what do I need for my, for this candle? So I'm gonna take the one that has a candle. So I'll take this one, cost me three gems, goes in my discard pile. These go to the bottom. I take my gems and I put them back in the gem bag. Color of gems mean absolutely nothing. They're just cool. All right, then what I can do, that's my main action. Then I have some free actions I can do. I can commit, withdraw, or discard cards from my quests. I need to have two candles. I don't have any candles right now, so I don't wanna do that. Um, I can use special powers. I don't have any special power cards right now. Well, I could use this, but I don't want to. Um, use treasure tokens. I don't want to do any of that. So then I can discard down and draw back up to five. And I'm actually going to discard all four of these cards. I'm going to keep this one. And then I'm going to draw back up to five. Two, three, four. All right. And that's my turn. So that's Red's turn. If I defeated any creatures at that point or open quest, they would all get refilled going north and around. Middle is last. Um, then it's this player's turn. They'll draw five. Okay. They have some different things. So they have a Peaceful Dragon. Peaceful Dragon does absolutely nothing. It just clogs up your deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and discard that. Then I have a dog. A dog has a shovel and a gem. We don't have anything that needs a shovel. It's an expansion that I don't think I have. And But it will let me get a gem. So I'm gonna play that, take a gem. Then, I have this. I can exchange any two statues. But I don't want to do that right now. And I have a candle and a toothbrush. So a flame and a magic wand. Can I do anything? I cannot. What do I need for my quests? Two goat heads. So I do not want to do any of that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to just go visit this statue right now. That's gonna let me get some artifacts. So I will take three from this one because I don't have enough for this, I need five. I'll draw three, then I can keep any of them that I want. And I'm gonna do this one, Looking Glass. It's gonna let me double the value of a symbol card that I use this turn. So I'll buy that. That's two, I can buy another one if I want to. But I don't want to, so I'm just gonna spend two gems for that one. Put this back at the bottom of the deck. And then I could commit some stuff. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to discard my whole hand and I'll draw five. All right, and then it's back to this player's turn. So let's go ahead and we'll take another turn. I want to see, show you adventuring so you can see that. All right, so I have a dog, so I'm going to take a gem. Peaceful Dragon does nothing, so I'll discard that. Then I have a magic wand and a broom. I need candles still. So, where am I? Can I defeat anything? I cannot, this is terrible. So I will keep these. I'm going to, I can't visit the creatures, so I'm going to use a magic carpet. So you flip one of these face down, you have three in the game. Then I'm going to move over here and I'm going to take some quests and I'm going to show you what happens there. So when you take quests, you're going to draw three, just like normal. And then you keep one. So I need two goat heads and a tooth, two waters and a tooth or three waters. And I think I'm going to, and they all have 
interesting little text doubts the unquenchable flames of the dragon in Flambula. So they're just silly stuff like that. I think I want to keep this three water one right here. So that'll be three points if I can complete it. So I'll put that there. The rest go on the bottom. Now I can discard down or do any special actions that I want. I don't have any water, flames. So I'm going to discard everything but this. I'm going to discard everything. Then I'm going to draw up to five. So one, two, three, four. Then just like a normal deck builder, you're going to shuffle your discard deck, your discard pile, and draw up to five. And then I'll put that there and ready to go. All right, so now this player's turn. Let's see if we can go adventuring. Where are they? They are here. Okay, so they're gonna go adventuring, so I'm gonna show you that. So they're gonna flip this. They're gonna fly across this one. Now they're gonna start adventuring. So they're gonna to try to get the witch, so they need to subdue it with some water. Done. Then they're gonna cross. They need to get this one, subdue it with the helmet. Done. They go here. Then they will. Oh, and I'm going to play this as well. Any cards I subdue this turn will go into my hand, not my discard pile. So let's take them right now. So one, get that crystal. I'll leave these here so I know that I did it. All right, then can I do anything else or did I want to go? I'm actually not going to. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to play two of the same item to defeat the tooth. So I'll do that. The tooth will go into my hand because any cards I subdue go into my hand. Uh, they put these there and let them know that I did it. And then I think I'm tapped out because I have a, spat, a sword, a club, and a net. And I can't do any of that here. So I am done. So I'll take these cards that I played, put them into my discard pile. I gained the gems that were on the cards, which I put on my little player board there. And then I, do I want to contribute any of these? What do I need? I keep forgetting. It's hard to see and I want to shake the camera. Goat head. Nope, okay. So I'm going to discard all of these and then I'm done. So I draw back up to five, one, two, three, Shuffle. Maybe. Okay, so we'll shuffle. One, two, three, four, five. Put these guys right there. All right, then I will refill the board, starting with the north and going around. So we will do this. This, oh, Mischievous Raven. The player with the most gems loses half. If this player has four gems or fewer, they're unaffected. So they have four, so they don't have to worry about it. Mischievous Raven, same. Billy Goat. And that. All right, and that's effectively how the game's going to play. You're going to keep going until either the creature deck runs out, which is likely, or someone has a total of eight points in quest minus any uncompleted quests because they're negative points so once one of those two things happen the game's over and whoever has the most points is the winner um, i didn't show you completing a quest but let's just look at one so let's take this one if i went to the highlands with my character so i was over here i would just have cards either assigned to committed to this or in my hand if it's three water i would take this it would go on my player board like this. I would get three points towards the end of the game. And I'd also get the appropriate number of crystals, which I think was two. And then I'm a third almost of the way, more than a third of completing that goal. So I need to complete this because that's negative. So that's completing a quest. Uh, you saw visiting a statue, getting quests, artifacts, and beasts. Um, so yeah, it's just you're going around adventuring, trying to get better cards in your hand so you can ultimately qu complete quest because that is the goal. So that is how you play Fantastica. Let's go up the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was Fantastica. So we've had this game for quite some time. Um, we saw Rado play it because I'm a huge Rado fan. 
and it seemed interesting. It was a deck builder, but it had so much more stuff going on. You were traveling around this map, you were fighting creatures, you were doing quests. So we picked it up. We got the rucksack version, which is effectively a thinner box. Um, it doesn't have a board. There might be a few other differences, but I don't know them. So when I backed Alf Seeger's two-player version of this game called Rival Realms, I also was able to get the mats that you saw in the video. So the board mat is actually something that I got from an additional Kickstarter. So it's gonna make it more like the actual version of the game. And I also got a few um, expansions. I have like five, but I only showed two, which are the additional creatures and artifacts. And I think that might be all that I showed there. So yeah, there, there's some other stuff that changes a little more drastically, but I didn't wanna show that. So yeah, this, this is a really interesting game. I've played this at two, three, and four, so all player counts. And I think my favorite is two. Only because the game takes a little bit too long at the higher player counts. So like it says on the box, what, 45 to 60 minutes is what I said? There's no way. If you're playing this with three or four players, it's going on double that. Two players, it might even go longer than 60 minutes, which could be a little rough. But, I mean, you're having fun playing it, so it's not a big deal. But it's gorgeous on the board. I, I like the art quite a bit. Granted, it's all subjective. Like, these artifact cards are pretty generic. They just have text in the, the border. But some of these creatures look interesting, in my opinion. They, they just look old school. Like, the cards look old school and just imaginary and pretend. I like it. I, I like all that stuff. These statues are really nice wooden bits. No complaints there. Whole bag of different colored gems that the colors don't mean anything but they look amazing so the production is nice i like it the place the play mat that i have great board holds everything where it needs to be shows the roads i like all, everything about it my only complaint is now that i have some additional expansions this box might be a little small but that's my fault not this box's fault so i'm not really going to knock it for that the rule book is not great um i wish it was a little better it's pretty tricky to figure out what some things do, just the way it's laid out. You can learn it, you can figure it out. At the end of the day, it's not ultimately that hard, but it would be easier if the rule book was not as bad. But that's what happens sometimes in games. So yeah, I, I like this game quite a bit. We like deck builders. Um, I don't care about the theme as much. It's, it's cute, but Katie really liked it, which is why we bought this in the first place. And so if you're into that theme, a silly little kid fantasy theme and you really like deck builders, I would say this is one you should check out. So I'm going to give this a BGM accepted seal. This is going to get a 7 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.5 out of 5 wrenches on our arbitrary wrench scale that means absolutely nothing. But I'd like to give it the games that we enjoy and that's what I'm going to do. So that is Fantastica from Eagle Griffin Games and designer Alf Secret. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics and as always, keep gaming!